Welcome to the show today. Today I have Jörg Meyer on the show, who is the Head of International Business Development for Europe at Computer Aid. Now, I'm very excited about this uh, topic. We have a really interesting uh, conversation today about collaboration. Really excited to dive into this. But before we go into that, um, I'd love to have a bit of context. Like, who is Jörg Meyer? What's, uh, what's your background? What is, uh, what is, what's your story uh, that got you to where you are today? Sure. Well, first of all, hello, um, Daniel. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, so a little bit of personal history. I think it's relevant um, as we get into my current philosophies. Um, I was born in Germany. I'm a dual national. We left Germany, though, when I was a child um, and moved to the United States, um, where I grew up um, bilingual. Um, but even th because of my father, uh, we started traveling around the world. So um, I grew up in Puerto Rico, then in Spain and Portugal. Um, and then after I graduated from university here in the United States, I too then entered a career um, which took me around the world, um, several times to Europe, um, including in Switzerland, in, in Gladbach, um, in Brussels, in Warsaw, down in Australia, and including in Latin America as well. And I mentioned that because it, it showed me, well, not only was I passionate about people and all that, but it showed me the importance of culture, understanding cultures, understanding that every person, every um, individual has their own culture, their own mindset in terms of how you approach people. Um, I'm married. My wife is from Brazil. That adds to my, my flair as well. <laughs> and I have two children. So, Love that. Love that. You know, it's, 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 it's always inspiring to see well-traveled uh, people or talk to well-traveled people because they have an entirely different worldview of, of how the world works. It's usually a bit more, a bit more of a true worldview <laughs> of how the world works. It, it's funny you mentioned that. So I mentioned I, I worked in, uh, in um, Europe for a while. Um, and indeed, in Europe, everyone recognizes that there are different cultures with every single country. But what was surprising is um, when I had the opportunity to be the first regional CIO um, for Latin America for my previous employer, much like many people, I thought Latin America was just one homogeneous culture. Obviously, I know Brazil speaks Portuguese, the rest speaks Spanish, but I thought it was just all one culture. And even in Latin America, the, the, the differences from country to country um, are not only sometimes, I, of course, they're subtle, but sometimes they're quite dramatic as well. So indeed, that, it's, it's wonderful to get to know people, to see what their, their strengths are, what their challenges are, and then adjust what you do um with them based on on those needs absolutely yeah it's 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 it, it is very fascinating and same thing with africa right i mean it's it's not it's not really right now uh, i mean it's now getting more and more interesting for companies to expand there and i i know an entrepreneur who's, who's very successful at expanding the company in africa but then again even even talking about africa as africa is completely wrong because there's no Africa. There is every single country has its own unique way of doing things like Latin America, like Europe. And uh, yeah, it's very, very inspiring. It's, it's a very interesting topic. We're probably going to go into um, in a couple of minutes as well. So, um, so you, 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 you worked with a um, couple of companies before in tech leadership roles, uh, a CIO there. You worked across the world. So you gathered a lot of uh, international experience, a lot of tech leadership experience. Now you're at uh, Computer Aid. So tell me a bit more about what's, what's, what's most exciting right now. Well, so um, the opportunity at Computer Aid um, happened by happenstance. Um, as I mentioned, I, I had worked around the world for, for my previous employer, Mark Sharp and Dome. Um, and then I started hearing about Computer Aid. And it's a 4,000 person privately owned IT company with about $500 million in sales. So it's not small. Um, it's still privately owned. Our CEO is, is our owner still leads the organization. Um, but like I said, I had not, I'd never heard of it before. And it was only half an hour from my house. Um, furthermore, I had heard that um, through a couple of conversations that they were indeed international. So, well, that's interesting. Here's a computer company, 4,000 people, and they're international. I've never heard of them before. But what I also heard is that... Um, this company, which prides itself on metrics and productivity and finding efficiencies by measuring everything, um, the international expansion has been predominantly in Asia and in Latin America and not in Europe. And giving my 
personal heritage um, and my understanding of the European continent um, because of my previous roles, I thought, well, there's a really big opportunity here to leverage the strengths of computer aid and really try to open up some of our know-how to the European market. Um, so I came on board in March of, of this past year um, to work together directly with the owner on coming up with a strategy for global expansion um, for computer aid. Um, that global expansion um, is, I think, quite unique. And, and the reason why I think it's quite unique is as compared to some multinational companies looking at American companies like an Accenture, e &Y, whatever, or the Indian companies like a Wipro, Infosys, whatever, um, their strategy has been globally to establish a presence in each market. And our philosophy, our strategy is very different because computer aid success has been over the years built on the strengths of the relationships we have with our clients. And to build a strong, long-lasting relationship, when we have clients that we've had for 20 years, um, you need to understand those clients. You need to, to be around them. You need to understand their culture. And, it, and we believe establishing a brand new entity in different markets, you're not gonna gain that knowledge. So our strategy has been since 2000, um, when we first started um, finding partners outside the United States, is to indeed find partners, to, to identify companies that have high quality, that, have, that are financially secure, that have strong relationships with their clients, and work with those um, as part of the partnerships that Computer Aid establishes. Why? We, we indeed here at Computer Aid, we have many multinational clients. Those multinational clients will often come to us and say, listen, we love what you're doing for us here. We have a subsidiary in Brazil. Can you help us? And so in the past, we've had to then um, find um, reactively some partners. Now, um, our strategy is, and we'll be launching in November, is to proactively identify partners, and my focus in the first round is gonna be Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and the Netherlands. Proactively find partners that are similar to what we are um, and establish those relationships. The second part, though, that's even more exciting is these partnerships that we want to establish should not just be beneficial to computer aid. We believe that by linking these various member companies together into a global alliance, that allows companies, for example, in Germany, to suddenly leverage the partner we've established in Brazil or in the Philippines or wherever. So in, indeed, in linking the members into a global network for collaborating. And then the last part is, and I think this is also, we'll probably touch upon this a bit later, Technology is moving so quickly. No company has the resources, financial resources or people resources, nor the time to be able to become experts on every single technology that's out there. So in addition to finding IT services companies, we're also proactively looking for companies that have certain specialties. It could be consulting, could be security, could be IoT, and welcome them into the, into the alliance as well um, because our members would benefit from that, but also this provides them then a global marketplace to offer up their services to clients they never would have identified otherwise. I love, 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 love that. Uh, not, I mean, first of all, from a, from a philosophy, I guess from a philosophy perspective, because, you know, for, for a long time now in this industrial age, there, everybody has looked at the market and said, well, you know, these are our competitors. We need to outcompete others. We need to gain market share. We need to control markets. We need to control flow. Um, these were the predominant ways business was done, especially on a, on a global scale when companies expanded. And now you're suddenly coming in and you're saying, well, guys, there's, there's maybe a different way. And I love, love, love that. Obviously, you know, you, you're, probably not the, you're probably not the first one to start with this idea, but the way you guys are building this is so inspiring. That's why I wanted to do this interview with you because it is so inspiring for me to see 
that you guys are not going out there and saying, we want to control the global market in this field and become a 500 million people company uh, and just control everything, which is a horror show just from a management perspective and from an organizational perspective. No, but instead of doing that, well, let's, let's maybe work a little bit more like nature actually works <laughs> because a tree isn't trying to take over the world by saying, let me, let me expand my branches into, into the rest of the world. Now, a tree, you know, let's go of its seeds and goes like, wherever you guys go is fine. Some will succeed and some won't, but that's sort of like the way. And, and it doesn't control the outcome and it doesn't control the relationship. It lets them go. And I find that incredibly inspiring there. So that's it's, it's funny. It's funny. I, one of the things that working for computer aid um, has shown me. So here we have this, this, um, this owner of ours, Tony Salvaggio, who built this company. He had worked for a while at IBM and then built it, established this company back 35 years ago. And seeing his entrepreneurial spirit, every single day and the ideas he comes forward with is inspiring and in this particular space um and one of the things he, he's highlighted is you can either see globalization as a threat in which case indeed as you said you want to try to take it over or you see it as an opportunity and i think that's much more entrepreneurial so one of the things that that we've established as as part of the strategy is what is what's the opportunity um, that people need to or people can take advantage of? So here you have wonderful companies who have existed for a number of different years quite successfully. But what is it that they don't have? They ha what they do have is a the local touch. They understand the local culture. They probably like to go to the same soccer game, drink the same beer. They understand what's in the heart and the minds of their clients because they're together with them. They don't have the innovative products because they can't, not that they don't have some of their own, but they cannot invest R and D dollars into R and D euros into every single new innovative idea that they want to pursue. And they don't have the global reach. So one of the things, and I cannot take ownership of this phrase, but I've, I've, I've used the phrase um, global reach, but local touch because it's that, it's that local, looking at your client in the eyes and knowing what they're thinking that you cannot just build from scratch. Um, so the, the alliance is specifically there to, to address the needs and concerns that a company may have while really leveraging and, and, and embracing the uniqueness that they all have. Now this is it's, it's so amazing. I mean, because basically what, you're, what you just identified is, is, is what makes each of the partners in the alliance and you unique from in a way that you're not competing, but you're actually collaborating because you're not saying guys, we are basically the same. We have the same customers. We have the same market. We have the same stuff. So yes, of course we're competitors. No, but you take something that is incredibly unique, um, almost like DNA. And you say, guys, this is your DNA. Nobody can compete with your DNA. Nobody can compete with our DNA because every single DNA of every single human being is completely, utterly just unique. That's, that's it, right? So you cannot compete with DNA. It just, it doesn't, on the DNA level, it doesn't work. There's no way. So you have to look at it from a collaboration perspective. Right. But it's very, very exciting. So, um, so what's, what, what's the, what's the, what's the, what are sort of the milestones with, with the alliance? So I, I understand the concept behind it, the philosophy, mm -hmm. the idea, uh, part of the strategy I understand as well. So what, what sort of like, what's, what's the, what's the long-term plan? What's the long-term vision with, with the Alliance? Sure. So, um, I was over in Germany in June speaking to, um, some, some opinion leaders there, um, my personal network and network of other people as well to share the concepts with them. Um, and found that it was very, very well embraced because of everything you just said, it is non-threatening. Um, and, and once I, once I established that we don't want to put our own flag somewhere, um, people's eyes lit up and everyone immediately got the, um, got the idea. So, um, we're hoping to launch in June. When I say launch, um, we're putting together all the various marketing material, um, to be able to, to spread the word. 
Um, we would then have some, some webinars on it as well for people to sign up and get more information on. And then I hope to then have physical meetings in various locations in Germany in January, um, where we would invite not only the, um, the prospective members that have shown interest through the webinars, but also some of our existing partners. And then um, have those conversations. Um, if that is all successful, or after that is all successful, I should be more optimistic about it, um, I would then be going into different markets as well. I've started some conversations in Switzerland, um, some, some meetings, uh, some conversations for Austria in the, in the coming weeks, as well as Netherlands as well. So um, I, I want to test the, test the, the waters um, in a market that I know a little bit better because of my heritage. Um, but then we want to aggressively move forward um, in the rest of Europe as well. And then I have a colleague who will then focus his energies on Asia. Um, and, and, and hopefully there'll be some opportunities there as well. So um, we would we have about a dozen um, partners at the moment that are from a variety of different um, skill sets. Some are IT services. Um, we have a partner in cloud computing. We have one in, in cybersecurity. We have a nearshore development center partner in, in Eastern Europe. We have our own in, in Asia and in India and in Philippines. Um, so the idea is then to, to continue to build out that um, and we'll see where this takes us. I, I would love to have 50 partners by the end of next year. I, I love this because it's not, it's not only a relationship that you're building between you and the partners, but you're actually establishing a network where there's more happening exponentially between the partners. And actually, I should have mentioned that. I should have um, um, spoke, spoken a bit more about that. I actually see the terms that I use are differentiating between members and partners. So um, the various companies I'll be speaking with are, um, we, we would hopefully have them be members of the alliance. It is then up to them, and we would then promote the alliance, we would promote each individual member to one another, such that all the members would know what other members' strengths are, what they are. Um, and by the way, we'll have a website up with, which, um, which are oriented towards prospective clients as well as members. So they all become members. When there are opportunities um, for one, uh, for two or more members to work together, then they enter into a partnership agreement. Um, so indeed, and those, and, and I should also mention that. Um, Computer Aid, the US affiliates or our main group, I see them as a member of the alliance which Computer Aid happens to be running. Um, and they are, they'll be treated the same as every other member. And if Computer Aid would like to then enter into an agreement with a member in Germany because of a specific opportunity, then they would enter into a partnership for that opportunity. Could be short term or long term. And indeed, as you just said, and that's why I, um, I realized I, sh I should have spoken about it is, um, we are happy if members will work together as some of our existing partners have already as well. So in our, we have a member in Spain or an existing partner in Spain and a partner in Italy. They've actually collaborated on things that have nothing to do with us. And, and that's what we hope to see happen. I, I, I love this so much because it goes in the exactly same direction from a, from a beliefs or mindset perspective of, of, of what we're doing with Leaders Bridge, you know, with the ecosystem, you know, there's no, I mean, it's kind of like we, we both realize that there's no point in controlling the market or controlling what the rest does. And there's a lot more point in empowering um, the stakeholders to do great things and to do yeah. great things together. Because when something happens together, well, it has like exponentially bigger impact than if anyone would do it by themselves. Yeah. And uh, I totally I, love that. Yeah. Now, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about this entire concept. So the Alliance is sort of the, the vehicle, the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to, to, to talk more also now about this, this entire concept about uh, competition versus collaboration on a global scale in mm -hmm. this new digital economy. Because there's still lots of companies out there who, who have a lot of fears with you know, competition, trying to outcompete others and stuff like that. And also trying to do everything by themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's another form of competition. Uh, trying to say, you know, no, let's do this by ourselves. Let's, let's have the entire software development done internally. And in Switzerland, that is, you know, I'm talking about the Swiss market now. 
in Switzerland, that is a big challenge because in Switzerland, the, you know, the, the salaries are insanely high. So not, not every, every company can actually afford to do that. And also, in most cases, it doesn't make any sense. And it has nothing to do with taking away jobs from Swiss people or something like that. I mean, it's just absolutely idiotic if, if, if anyone looks at it like that. I mean, it's just about empowering a global market that is global anyway, no matter how much you're trying to deny it. <laughs> and it's more about tapping into that international arbitrage. So if, if, there, if there's one term that stuck with me from economy classes at university, it's international arbitrage. <laughs> and I find that incredibly fascinating. So I'd like to hear your perspective. Where do you see this entire idea of collaboration in this digital economy go? Do you think it's going to just naturally open up a lot more? Do you think we're going to see a lot more companies build their own alliances, join alliances? Or wh where do you think we're going to go with this thing? Um, it, it's, it's funny. Um, one, of, one of my additional responsibilities um, is to try to analyze how or if computer aid for the domestic market should stand up a, a cybersecurity practice. Okay. I mentioned before we have a partner from Spain, and so we're working together with them. And we have some 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 companies here in the United States that we've also worked with in cybersecurity. Um, but it's been reactive so far. So especially with the company in Spain, we're trying to find out does it make sense? And indeed, and I had a wonderful conversation. Again, this is very insightful about, about our owner. Um, he said, well, this is a saturated market. And I said, well, saturated, I, it's, it's cybersecurity is a, is a, um, is a area that is still growing exponentially. How can you say it's saturated? And then it, it occurred to me after a couple of conversations, the saturation that he was talking about was there's many me too companies. There's many companies that do penetration testing, vulnerability monitoring, et cetera, but there's no differentiation. Um, so does anybody look at aspects of cybersecurity that no other company is looking at? So that's actually what we're exploring at the moment. So indeed, a key element of what we're doing with the Alliance um, is it is a differentiator because if people are trying to do things on their own and they're trying to manage their own um, ecosystem, they are limited, be it because of new tools I mentioned before, or indeed, as you mentioned just now, the whole labor arbitrage. And we need to be able to offer to our members, uh, well, I should first say, IT companies need to be able to offer to their clients, um, not only tools, but services at, at ever increasing competitive rates. You cannot simply do everything locally in-house um, and first of all, compete economically. Um, but also, if you're, if you're trying to do everything locally, you won't have enough time to innovate. And, that, and that's the key, that's the differentiator that your clients are gonna be looking for. So um, we need to, or companies need to identify different ways of bringing in new products and tools while staying ahead of where your clients want to get to, knowing your clients' needs actually before they know what their needs are, and doing so at competitive rates because of the global economy. And, and you hit the nail on the head. That has to happen. And companies are either going to not do that because they're going to worry only about one or the other, but then they're going to go under because the world's not standing still. They have to be able to hit all these various things at the same time. Oh my God, I love that so much. Um, so I, I'm just trying to create a picture where we're going to be in 10 years or something like that from day. So I mean, <laughs> do, do, you think, do you think it's going to be like there's more and more and more companies that understand this idea, not the concept, but the idea of, of, of an alliance, of an ecosystem and things like that, and will build it? Or do you think it's, it's, there's maybe going to be a few predominant um, ecosystems per, you know, sector or industry that are simply going to make, basically make up the, the, the biggest uh, chunk of, you know, business and flow and, 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 and things like that. Well, I mean, what, or do you think it's going to be more like uh, very much niche 
uh, focused ecosystems or it's going to be like one big junk like IT ecosystem or it's probably going to be the security ecosystem. So do you think it's still going to be cluster specific or it's going to be much, much more cross cluster? Yes. <laughs> and, and I say that, <laughs> and I say that in all honesty, I, well, first, I don't think any one of us, uh, if we take a look at what's happened in the past 10 years and the unpredictability of the future, none of us can clearly uh, um, anticipate what's happening in the future. Um, but the answer has to be yes on both parts. Um, there, clearly, there's going to be specializations um, and there's also going to be generalizations around alliances. Um, I see alliances around things like cybersecurity because, again, we're looking at doing that just for our own practice here. Again, leveraging partners again rather than building up our, on our own. Um, so that's a very specialized mini alliance just for the U.S. market. There are other IT alliances out there, but to be honest, the ones I've looked so far, it's all about a distribution network for whoever runs the alliance. So it's very self-serving from that perspective. Um, and then there's alliances um, which work as a, as a collaborative collective. Now, I've not yet identified one that that's, um, has a vision as, as far reaching as ours within IT, although I've seen some in other industries, for example, um, finance and legal services, where there have been alliances even there's one based in Switzerland who actually have done that. And one can argue is now within the top five um, legal and, and accounting companies in the world because of the power of that global alliance. So sorry that you, you couldn't nail me down on a single yes, but indeed I think it's going to be multifaceted. Um, and indeed, if, if we try to nail down a single yes, then we are constraining ourselves which goes against the whole philosophy of collaborating and, and letting the ecosystem go wherever it wants to. There we go. I mean, you, uh, you said it perfectly. And I, I, you know, you just opened my eyes to, to I mean, I, I very much believe that we're going exactly in that direction. There's, there's always going to be the need for clusters because people in the clusters, they need to talk to each other. They need to work together, right? So there, there's always, like, I mean, starting with meetups, right? I mean, meetups is a great, uh, is a great um, concept of something like that to anything else. Um, but then, and I think that's where we have the lack right now, where it's not, that's where in the next 10 years, things will grow dramatically, which is cross cluster because right now we have cluster. So we got cybersecurity, we got blockchain, we got FinTech, we got, you know, we got all these clusters that are thriving, that are amazing and that are incredibly important. But what's not enough out there is things like the Alliance where you go like, well, yes, it is it, but it is cross cluster within IT. You're not saying it is this niche here, uh, but you're actually building cross cluster and even cross cluster, you know, at the edges of the spectrum, which I think is probably the most valuable and the most important because that's when true innovation happens, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. that's how, that's how pretty much every innovation you can possibly think of true innovation out there is, is now reality where yeah. you know, two people met and they go like, well, we don't really work in anything that is even remotely related. And then at one day in the future, there was something like the mouse on the computer yeah. and things like that, right? Yeah. Very and, much. And, and, and who said it recently? And every company in the world is an IT company, right? Because it's all about data. It's all about innovation. It's all about technologies. And, and again, it doesn't matter what company you're looking at in which industry, it's all IT. So to think that one can constrain IT to only one area is silly. And even in the conversations I've had with, um, with different companies about the Alliance, we are talking to um, education companies, um, certification com people that do certifications in different things, much like Computer Aid does in, um, in the United States. We're talking to consulting companies. I had a, com a conversation with a company um, who, who enables or provides um, legal advice and accounting advice for companies who want to expand internationally themselves. Um, because indeed, some companies are establishing their own entities around the world, right? That, that's, that is their strategy. Um, so um, the, the types of companies that we would need to welcome in, into the membership to satisfy potential needs from our members is quite broad. And that's 
and that's independent of the IT part, because as you said, I mean, there's there's um, big data analytics, there's cloud, there's um, there's IoT, I mean, everything, and, and that's what we know of today. Um, leave alone what we're, what's going to happen in two years and five years. That's a very good point. You, you know, we don't know what, what you know. IoT, that term itself, isn't that old. Neither right. is artificial intelligence as what we know it today, or or. Uh, blockchain for example. Robotic process or automation. Yep. There we go, exactly. So we don't know exactly what will be there in five years, so it, there's right. no point in trying to controlling anything. So I love, love, love that. You already went a little bit into my next question, which I always ask my guests, which is, so if you had a magic wand and you can say, you know, I, this is, these are some of the things I need access to to drive my mission forward uh, faster, quicker, better, easier, uh, what would it be? So. You know, maybe it's for you, it, it will be partners, members, potential companies. So what, 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 would, that, what would that main thing be for you? Indeed, that's what, I'm, exactly what you just said. So um, we are, at, at some point in time, um, the, the alliance will be so broad that it'll be a, a, a growing organization that grows, just grows because of it, its mass and, and its breadth. Okay, so people will, will know of us because of, of that and people will be anxious to join. Um, at the moment, although like I said, I, we, we established our first partnership 17 years ago. Um, we need, I'm, I'm looking for companies who see the potential and see it as enthusiastically as I do and our owner does. Um, the potential to indeed look at their clients um, and say, you know what, I can now offer you services anywhere in the world. If you, if you have a need in Southern Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, I can satisfy that need. Versus in the past, if their client says, can you help me? They would have said, uh, no. And what would they have done? They would have gone to one of the global companies, right? They had no choice. So to see that as an opportunity, to see an abundance of, of innovative, innovative products, which other companies have spent money on over the years to develop, again, provides an opportunity. And, and for them to realize that rather than trying to do it all themselves, um, through, they can achieve exponential growth by working with other companies and leveraging everybody else's strengths and, and, and by the way, augmenting their own, um, augmenting the strengths of other companies with tools that, they them, that new members themselves bring in. So um, it's, it's looking for out-of-the-box thinkers who, who recognize that globalization is indeed an opportunity and not a threat, and they can turn that opportunity into reality um, through, through something like the Alliance. I love that, love that. Now, obviously the next question is, where can people find more about you and about the Alliance? Um, well, I can pro provide to you um, my email address, okay? Um, and you can probably put that in, in the narrative um, around your video, around this conversation. Um, and we will indeed have a website up and running shortly um, where they can come, come visit us um, and know more about what the Alliance currently is. Um, we, we have some information about some of the services that are currently offered, who our members are, um, as well as a, an extensive FAQ about that as well. I love that. So here's, here's what I just said. Let me, let, me, let me link to maybe LinkedIn for people to you know, make the connection personally with you. And then uh, once this website is up, obviously we will email um, about it. So I will put it into the notes as well so people can Perfect. check out the alliance. Um, yeah, and, and, and then take it from there. And you know, check That'd be awesome. if it's uh, well in alignment <laughs> with what and, they want to accomplish. And, then, and, uh, and definitely, specifically for the Swiss audience, and we are looking in the spring to, to um, look at the opportunities. And I would say specifically, I would look at, at Zurich, at, at Basel, and, and, and Geneva as well um, to see what those, those um, opportunities are for collaborating with, with new members in the Swiss market.
So. I love it. Love it. Thank you so much for your amazing insights and the incredibly engaging discussion about this very exciting topic of global collaboration and the alliance itself as, a, as an idea and concept and philosophy. So thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate the opportunity.